So for the past couple of days, there have been plenty of Z Z Z drama. Okay. Uh it's going on right here, right? At first it was a Z Z Z. Wait, let me see if I can find it. At first it was just this picture, right? Zenless Zone Zero uh community. Right now. You good? No. Okay. So what is the drama all about? Uh the most basic stuff is the censorship. Uh, they did show it right here. Uh, we did talk about that a couple of days ago. Uh, censorship. You can see the character. This girl, uh, she's supposed to have huge, you know, stuff and then, you know, got censored. Uh, same applies to her, Nicole as well, got censored. The clothes is a little bit different. But yeah, uh, a lot of people not don't like the new design. But ever since then, there have been more criticisms lately. Now, some with the user interface, some with the gameplay, some with the... I don't think anyone criticizes the story or the graphics. The, the story and graphics is good. But it's mostly the gameplay, the combat system, and the user interface. Alright. Let's have a look at this essay. So this is a very interesting... Uh, you can see it's a very well written. Alright, there's a... Ooh, UI is messy, number one. Point number one. And then there's pictures, example as well. So let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. I'm about 15 hours in. Okay. TLDR. <laughs> he put a TLDR first. I like it. I like the character designs and visuals, movement animations, everything. Very good looking. What needs work is the UI. Holy shit, the UI. Number two, the stamina system. Number three, the battle mechanics. Number four, the holo TVs. Number five, the day and night cycles. I will elaborate below with quick explanations. Story is mid. I mean, how to make the story interesting, right? I mean, like, it is, uh... I feel like the only way you can make a story interesting is if you do it like Nikki, where somebody dies. But Genshin and Honkai Star, you cannot do somebody dies. Or else you get censored. Nobody can die in the game. Same applies for ZZZ, right? Nobody should die. It's for kids. I mean, it's not for kids, but you need to market it to kids. So you cannot... You can only do so much, I think. Right, it's limited to um with those sensor it'll be twelve plus. You have to make sure that the, the story is what's the term again? Cater towards a wide audience, alright? Let's just make sure it's family friendly. So if too many people dying, you cannot cannot nobody should be dying. Okay, so let's have a look. Number one, UI is messy. I think the messy UI negatively impacts everything else, including the TVs, combat and everything. I found navigating the screen tedious. Most of the game feel cluttered and many things felt counterintuitive. So here is one example. This doesn't look that bad for me, you know? One of these is supposed to have a quest attached. Can you tell which? Uh, one of these is supposed to have a quest attached. Can I tell which one has a quest attached? Oh, okay. I'm guessing it's this one because you have a, a exclamation mark. Am I right? I'm guessing it's this one. It does take a, a while to, to get used to. It's the one with the blue text. Okay, so I was right, right? Um, yeah, I can I can see why this is... They're trying to modernize it, I guess, right? Example 2. Okay, there are rewards to be claimed, but not from this chapter. Uh, okay, it was from the second chapter. I didn't know I could scroll left and right since the first time I got here, there wasn't a second chapter. Also, you have to... You have the yellow thing on the bottom, right? Okay, I can see it. Open, you cannot scroll. You have to close that first. So if this thing is open, you cannot scroll. You have to close that first. Okay. Example 3. Uh, what is this? Tutorial for setting up the team in the challenge point. Instructions are top right. Press leader to continue. The thing you need to press is the plus sign on the bottom left. I wish the text was relocated and not scrolling. Or there's some sort of arrow pointing towards the objective. So you have to click this button here, okay? The plus at the bottom left. And this is the instructions that they ask you to, to read. Okay. Various UI pinpoints also show up for the other bits and I'll mention this accordingly. Hmm, I wonder if this user plays on a phone or a PC. This looks like looks like he's playing on a phone. Am I am I am I wrong? Because his ratio is not 16 by 9. His ratio is super wide. 
Like you can see this is very wide. I think this is a phone ratio. 21 by 9 or something. Like it looks like he's playing on the phone. So I can see why he, this issue can be a thing for, for phone users. Again, I could be wrong. He didn't really mention, right? Uh, okay, next issue is stamina. Too little to get stuff done. Okay, I've heard a, a lot about this, right? Um, apparently, when you play the story in this game, in ZZZ, you need to consume stamina, which is very interesting. I feel starved for stamina to do what I want. I personally chosen to push story missions and things needed to unlock them, since those give double EXP per stamina and are tied to unlocks. As a result, I have a giant backlog of side quests I cannot do, uh, characters and gear I cannot limit break, and other resource farming I cannot do since I don't have enough stamina. I'm about 10 levels under story recommended. Once stamina takes 6 minutes to recharge, there is no stamina given on level up. Yeah, this is something that I hear uh, people complain a lot about. Basically, you know how a lot of games like Blue Archive, um, Reverse 1999, if you level up, you get back the stamina, right? They refill your stamina for you. But this game, no. If you level up, you don't get any stamina. Which I think they can just apply and, and fix the issues easily. But I guess they purposely want to get you, I guess? You can recharge 6 hours worth of stamina once per day for standard currency and 6 times of 10 hours worth with premium currency. But I've not done that at all. It takes about 6 hours of stamina to uncap the first level lock of one character, 3 hours per story mission or side quest and anything between 3 to 5 hours for one run of the other resource stuff. There's a lot. More seasoned veterans can tell me if these numbers are reasonable and if I am being impatient. But in the context of beta, I would love to try as many things as possible which means I'll need the story and levels to unlock them. Initially, the honeymoon stamina lasts a bit longer. Battle mechanics, smashing is all it takes, I've heard this a lot. There are several mechanics in the game including but not limited to delayed button press for combos, holding for charge, building and using stacks, debuff build up, conditional stat down applications, etc. So none of which I felt necessary, visible or encouraged by the game so far. If you simply just dodge or swap at the right time and mash left click, the fights play themselves out for you. That's what I've been hearing as well. You can use a skill if you want to look cool. Camera is hectic, there's little room for manual target selection. Debuff, build up, and stat downs are not visible. I have no idea when I'm going to proc a debuff. Okay, that's going to be an issue. Stagger build up is honestly hard to see with groups of enemies. You have to really read the fine prints to find the nuances of each character's kit. But the fights so far are easy and short. That meshing is all it takes. Some of this evident in the gameplay video at the end of this post. I rationalize it as the game being accessible to mobile users playing while commuting, and maybe with harder content, it becomes necessary to play more deliberately, we'll see. Okay, the TV interface, I've heard a lot of people complain about this as well, right? Um, I don't like the TVs, but after playing, I think the TV is the biggest part of the game and cannot be replaced. Maybe they can spruce it up, I honestly don't know. The TV screens are honestly boring to look at and don't feel intuitive. But this is like the, the navigation, you navigate it around here, okay. I've come to assume they, they want some sort of universal canvas to paint different scenarios like falling through the floor, enemies running away, puzzles. Okay, so what is being shown on the screen however is not pleasant for the eyes and the stark contrast to the otherwise colorful cast. Things on screen take a bit of thinking and imagination to understand. There's tons of four scenario text with zoom ins. Feels like a grayscale scale auto scroller until you get to the puzzle bits. TV screen elements mean different things between missions and I often find myself prematurely exiting a level or section without knowing that I would. Hmm. This is supposed to be water pushing stuff to the left and you're supposed to collect stuff. Coins is good, colors is bad. Oh, coins is good. Colors is bad, okay. In this example, I cannot help but wish the water were actually blue waves. The background being not grey and the shore being sandy with the bed being some sort of debris. I'm copying a bit that with the enough sauce the TV is presentable, but it's 75% of the game. Alright. Uh this is the rock light. The rock light mode I've I've liked more than regular TV sections. I'm actually selecting a path, it doesn't cost stamina. Okay, the last thing is uh is that the last thing? Okay. 
in-game day or night cycles, they clash with real-time stuff. Each in-game has three segments, morning, evening, and midnight. Oh, okay. I found this to be very confusing. It took me a couple of hours to figure out which one the game means when they say per day. However, the more frustrating is the fact that some quests or events are tied to a certain time of the day. Okay, so some quests you can only do at night, some quests you can only do in the daytime. I think um, Genshin has that as well, right? I remember I have to always change the clock, right? You can change the clock, by the way, in Genshin. You have to like, oh, set the, set the time to this time, this time, this time. Uh, and then you next day and then the mission will activate, right? And some character quests have a time limit before they are gone. After three surveys, I am still not 100% sure how to pass time to the one I want, especially evening. Resting takes no stamina, but takes you to the next day. Quests sometimes force you to a certain time of the day, and I could not get to evening without spending stamina on a short side quest to take an evening only quest. This is a minor complaint, please add a free way to pass time precisely. Okay, that's going to be Gan. Yeah, Genshin, uh, Genshin has that as far as I know. In conclusion, final one. Despite the many complaints, I have liked the game a bit more as I played. I partially blame trailers. Ooh, trailers are to be blamed for showing only the flashy parts of combat, only to hide the main game that is TVs. At this moment, I think ZZZ is quite messy, but I also have a fairly large tank of copium. I like to think there's time to cook the game to an edible, enjoyable state. I hope the testers will bring up more than just censorship woes and TVs in their feedback because the concerns are definitely plentiful. All right, and frankly, I don't know if they can unnerve Nicole without some gymnastics. However, I want to leave on a positive note. The end of chapter two showcase off the best part of the game with a decent fight and very well done cutscenes of likable characters. So I wanted to share it. Spoilers though. Okay, let me see. I guess I can show a little bit, but we can look at the boss fight, but I don't want to spoil the story. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet. So is this the furry guy? No, this is not. Okay. Oh, he got the bear as well. Yeah, I think this guy is playing on the phone because this ratio is so, um, it's so wide, it's so long. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe he's just on a super wide, his monitor is like super, uh, what is that called, ultra wide, curved monitor or something. I mean, yeah, it is pretty flashy, right? You can see the enemies are trying to, oh, the enemy went down. So there's always quick time events that you can uh, tap. Pretty cool. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. I think they are showing the story now. But yeah, that's part of the gameplay, right? Um, very, very interesting. So yeah, I feel like uh, if he says that the game is not ready, you know, and he even lists down the issue in the entire essay, right? Essay. Does the game has co-op? As far as I know, not, no. Or at least not yet, right? Easy boss. The UI picture in example one gave me aneurysm. Huh. Why the hell does that UI look like Pinterest? Okay, they're talking about this one. This one. Yeah, it does look like Pinterest, eh? Like, um, when you're browsing through pictures, it is a little bit messy though. But yeah, um, you don't get stamina on level up, that's why people are complaining on main story requiring stamina. Because pretty much all the gacha games that does that doesn't have any problem with stamina when clearing main story because they give you a lot of stamina refills and level ups gives you a lot of stamina. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, just, just add that then. If they can add that. Honkai Star Rail also automatically banks any extra stamina you generate over your cap, up to 10 days worth. You can freely withdraw from the reserve 
whenever you want in case you want to do some extra farming or something. Both Genshin and Honkai Star Rail lock the story behind account level though. Which means for a new player, you have to wait a few days to continue with the story the first few times you hit the roadblock. It's not a big deal if you take it slow or play casually and after the first few level blocks, it stops being a thing. But they do prevent you from continuing the story early on. Yep. TV puzzles before battle might kill the game. It's cute and maybe a good side game to earn rewards. Before every battle though, will grind people into quitting. Quitting? Damn. Gain and Starry doesn't give stamina a level up too. I mean... You can't compare that with ZZZ because Gen and Star Rail doesn't need stamina for sto uh, for main story. But this game needs stamina for main story. Does it make sense? Genshin, you can play the story without needing stamina. You don't need st the only thing that you need stam Genshin, the stamina is the resin, right? That's for you to farm stuff. But in ZZZ, if you want to play the main story, you sort of need stamina as well. Which is a bit... It's very different, right? It's a very different stamina system design. Stamina system is just a poor game design, Nikkei proves it. I mean, yeah, Nikkei, Nikkei um, watching streamers focus on the mini games rather than the core gameplay made me more interested in the other upcoming games instead. LMAO! 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 So no one is interested in the game anymore? Everyone's going to go to Wootering? Wootering? Oh my god, so much essay. Huh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. But yeah, uh, it seems like a lot of people have... I do see... I think the regular sentiment right now, the majority, seems to not like ZZZ as much, I guess. Based on all the things that I've read. 